by the works of the enemy. And as Jeff spoke forth, we need to get on the offensive, spiritually. And so, what's the scripture that comes to mind when you hear the word, be strong? Anybody? Joshua, that's a good one. How about, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God. So we're going to break down Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, verse by verse, to finish this year, going into 2024. Interesting, at the, we were closing the, um, two weeks ago the Gone Fishing series. I shared about how fishing is one of the most difficult jobs, professions that there is. It's one of the most dangerous. And to be a good fisherman, you've got to be strong. But being a fisher of souls, we know how difficult people are, hello? How complex we all are. How difficult we are to reach. And the only way it's possible, we can't save no one. Everyone is saved only by God's grace. And so we got to be strong in the Lord if we're going to reach anyone. Our spouse, our children, our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends, our enemies. The only way we can reach anyone is by being strong. And so come along with this journey as we go into the Be Strong series, starting today with verse 1. Actually, it's not verse 1. It's the first verse in these teachings is verse number 10. And we understand how we get spiritual strength. Now, natural strength, if I wanted to be strong physically, what would I do? Gabe, what do you do if you want to be stronger than you already are? Lift weights. <laughs> You're going to pump yourself up. Now, if you remember back in the early SNL days, there used to be Hans and Franz. And today, Bruce was going to teach with me. He was going to be Franz. I was going to be Hans. And we were going to pump you up, but Bruce had a little incident, so his arm's a little bit in pain. But we pray total restoration in Jesus' name. So Franz is still here. Hans is here, and we're going to pump you up. Amen. Over the next few weeks, Dave's going to be Franz as well. Pastor Steve's going to be Franz. <laughs> We've got a few other people going to join in on this series to pump you up. It's time to get pumped up and ready for 2024. But we know how we get pumped up, how the Lord pumps us up. is not always the way, you know, with pumping weights, a big part of gaining strength in weightlifting is resistance. When you're pumping the weight, you actually, best it actually is to take your time when you're doing your set. Each set, each rip, you take your time because it's resistance that actually helps your muscles develop. And the way God works resistance, He works strength in us, is through trials and tests. And sometimes those things don't just go away like that, do they? They last for a while. They go through a time. Because God is developing resistance, or another word is endurance or perseverance. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, how many of you know that there's many kinds? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance or endurance. Or resistance. We're able to learn to resist the enemy and rely on the Lord. So spiritual strength really comes from learning through the hard knocks of life to rely on God and not ourselves. So now Ephesians 6.10. A final word. What does it mean when you give somebody a final word? It's final. It means something. This is one word that you better remember. I know you might not have been paying attention to anything else I said, but this final word, you better open up your ears because this could be life or death. This is an important word. 
So Paul was addressing the church of Ephesus with all that he had shared. This is the final word. It's also what a general usually gives their troops before they go out in the battle, a final word. Before we go out, this is the final word. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So this is the kind of series that you're going to want to grunt. Even if you're a woman, I know men like to grunt. We like, you know, when it's a good fight, when it's a good boxing match, a good football game or whatever. It's ah. So this whole series is going to be one of those ah type of series. You're going to be what? Pumped up. So the first thing that we got to do to become strong in the Lord is to acknowledge how weak we really are. Because it's not about being strong in ourselves; It's about being strong in the Lord. So if I'm going to be strong in the Lord, i got to realize that apart from the Lord lies no good thing. I am weak apart from God. I can handle nothing. What will it take for us to get to that place? Because that's why most of us are going through the tests and trials we're going through is to really bring us down to our face, to get down on our knees before the Lord, to humble ourselves before God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, each time he said, my grace is all you need. Not me and then his grace. It's no, all you need. You don't, you don't need anything that you will bring. Nothing you bring is needed. All you need is God's grace. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses. How many of us have been at some point in our life where we know we messed up, we know we've failed, we've done so much wrong, but we don't want to own it? We're going to pretend like everything's okay. We're going to pretend we got it all together. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. God is good. I'm blessed. We know where our life has done falling apart. We don't know what we're going to do. We don't know how we're going to make it through the day. But yet we're going to say, I'm okay. I'm good. That's our ego. That's our pride. What's the first thing you got to do, Ralph, Joe, to get help when it comes to Alcoholic Anonymous? What's the first thing you got to admit? Powerless. <laughs> we are powerless. Powerless. Until we get to that place, God is not our strength. We're still walking on our own strength. That's why life's so hard. That's why life's so difficult. Because we are trying to do things on our own. And we only turn to God when all else has failed. God wants us to turn to Him from the get-go. First thing in the morning. And then throughout the day, we turn to God in everything all the time. The Proverbs 3, 5 lifestyle. Acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. In all, not some of our ways. Not when all else has failed. In all of your ways, acknowledge me. Then I would direct your path. When God is directing our path, when we're on his path, we're in his safety. We're under the banner, his banner. We're protected. We're blessed. We're favored. We can avoid so much trials in this life. Some things we can't avoid. But there are things that we go through that we could have avoided. There's accidents. Sicknesses, diseases, all kinds of things that come into our life because we're not on his path. We're off his path. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, the hardships, the persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. If I could just realize and remember every moment how Desperate I am for God and how weak I am, how worthless, how powerless I am apart from God. If I could just stay in that position of humility. Because in order to be strong, I must be humble. In order to remain strong, I must remain humble. 
Humble yourself before the Lord, and then he will lift you up. So then we get lifted up with the Lord's strength. Every day we got to bow down before God. Humble ourselves, and then he lifts us up. Then he clothes us. Then he sends us through our day in his power and in his might. Are we humble? Have the trials in life brought us to that place of humility? Have we really surrendered to God? Have we really yielded to him? How much of us is still around? Because once we got saved, that was just the beginning. Now we're in this process called, called transformation. And the way transformation works is death to self and being obedient to Christ, alive in Christ. Death to self, alive in Christ. So really we're in a process of dying. We're always in a process of dying anyway, physically. But now we're, we're learning how to kill our soul. How to put our emotions under the power of the Holy Spirit. How to let the Holy Spirit take control of our lives. How to die to our flesh. How to let our flesh burn. What does it mean to be fire, on fire for the Lord? It means our flesh is on fire. We're surrendered everything. And to humble myself before the Lord means I'm no longer going to trust myself. I'm going to trust God. What does Isaiah 40, 31 say? Those who trust or wait in the Lord, those who trust or wait on the Lord, it's for those. You might not be one of those. I know I want to be one of those. I am one of those. Are you one of your those? Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you one of those? It's those who get up in the morning and put their hands up in the air. And say, God, I can't get through this day without your help. I need you. My help comes from you. My strength comes from you. I look to you where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. As, as Joel preached last week, I set my eyes on you. Those who trust, those who wait on the Lord will what? Find new strength. Each day we need new strength. I can't rely on the strength that I had yesterday. Just like God taught the children of Israel in the wilderness, you can't rely on yesterday's manna. It'll be rotten today. I will give you fresh manna today. The only day he allowed them to have fresh manna from the previous day, or the, use the previous manna, was on the Sabbath. He would hold back that manna from getting stale, from getting moldy. So they could use it also on that Sabbath day, so they didn't work on that day. But in our life today, we need fresh strength, new strength, every single day. We can't take a day off. We're soldiers in war. We don't get a day off. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We are at war. We're in the army. There's no civilian life anymore. When we gave our life to Jesus, we gave up civilian life. We stepped into boot camp. We stepped into the battle. We're at war. And so if the enemy is watching and looking, lurking, Finding anyone he can devour. It's those who take a day off. Those who take a moment off. Those who decide to be in their flesh. That lion, that roaring lion, Satan, can only devour flesh. So if we're in the flesh, we give him the right to enter into our life. And to take a bite. And to cause chaos to take place. So we got to be in the spirit at all times. The only way we can get in the spirit is in the Lord. Waiting and trusting in him. Then we will now soar. They, they is the, is those. Those are now the they. They will now what? Soar high on wings like eagles. Because you're an eagle doesn't mean the storm has disappeared. 
What means is now you're above the storm. Storm is still there. So we still face storms in our life, but we're above it. We're above it. It's below us. The things that used to take us down don't take us down no more. They're still there, but they don't take us down no more. What, the, what our co-worker used to say that used to just get us on our last nerve where we would just lose our mind, now we're above that. We're above them in Christ. Our spouse who used to just irritate us. I was telling my wife, you know, my wife has grown, I've grown, we've all grown so much. It used to be a time when the things I used to do that used to irritate her, she would respond to it in a, not the nicest voice. How many of us are with? Amen. You know, it wasn't that easy to handle her correction. But she has learned to be gentle, learned to be kind. I have learned to be respond in a more humble way instead of my ego and my pride getting in the way. Because it's in the Lord. You get above the storm. You handle everything differently. You handle even the things in your home differently. Everything begins to change. You're above the storm. It's so much nicer up there. I'm telling you. So much nicer to be above looking down than being down looking up and seeing nothing but clouds and, and lightning and, and this force of mighty wind coming at you and you're just overwhelmed by everything that's being thrown at you. It's so much better to be above it. And there is a place in Christ for those who trust the Lord that we can be above it. That the worst kind of situation gets thrown at us and it's not even that big of a deal anymore because we trust the Lord. Doesn't mean we don't do nothing. But we trust the Lord. If he guides us to do something, we respond. But if he doesn't, we just trust him. And while we're doing it, we're trusting him. He's going to turn the matter around. He's going to work all things out for our good. He's a good, good father. What about might? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So when you think of the word might, first of all, the spirit of might goes along with the sevenfold spirit. The sevenfold spirit is the full power of the Holy Spirit in our lives in seven different functions. It's the, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. In the spirit, we have all those things in one. So the spirit of might, what do you think of might? If I hit you with all of my might, how you're affected by it depends on how much strength I have and how strong you are. If I'm not that strong and you're stronger than me and I hit you with all my might, it might not go that far. We watched a boxing match the other couple months ago and the other guy just knew to his opponent so well. It was supposed to be a really good fight. It wasn't a good fight. The other guy was way better than the... He was a veteran. He knew how to handle the fight. And so when he had his chance and he hit the guy with all of his might, it had an effect on that guy. And he won. But our might isn't in our own physical power. It's in the might of the Lord. When we learn to walk in His strength, when we're full of His strength, when we hit, when we pray something, it comes out with might. What it means, it comes out with authority. If we're not walking in the Spirit, we could pray and it doesn't have much power. It doesn't have much effect. But we're in this full of the Spirit of God and we pray, it comes out with might. When we're full of the Spirit of God and we're walking in obedience, everything we do, there's a might, there's a release, there is a change that takes place. We change, we're change makers. Because we're walking in might. It's like everything we're doing, we're just punching. Boom, boom, boom. Knocking everything out. Taking everybody out. Taking the enemy out. The enemy's running from us. He's flying. He's getting out of our path because he knows we're walking with might. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in some might. How about you? 
But I know that might doesn't come from myself. I can pump all the weights I want. I'm never going to get strong enough. But the more time I spend with the Lord, the more mighty he makes me. The more mighty he makes me, the more the devil has to run. I don't even know the devil in my life. I hardly even see him. I don't see him in any of his effects in my life because he runs from me. Not in me, but in the Lord. He runs from the Lord. So if we're in the Lord, we can have that same kind of attitude. It's not having pride. It's not being an ego, egomaniac. <laughs> it's knowing and trusting in the Lord. That if I walk in the Lord, the enemy has to run. He has to flee. And therefore, he's not able to work in my life, in my family's life, in my, anywhere in my, the people around me. That's the kind of attitude. That's why we can have our head up. People who are really strong physically, if you go to the gym, how do they walk? You know? <laughs> they got this. I had this uh, football player when I was in high school. He, he, was, he was on the line with me. His name was Walter, and he, he walked like this. <laughs> he had this strut, you know? He, he lifted a lot of weights, and he thought he was all that. I don't know if he was all that. I, I was a better lineman than him, but... <laughs> Hope he's not watching. <laughs> 40 years later, or 30 something years later. But that's what we walk in, that might. We can have our head up, we can have our shoulder back. And it doesn't mean we're proud. It means we're confident in the Lord. We're trusting in Him. We're yielding to Him. The key is Daniel 11.32. And it's interesting re reading this Scripture that's often quoted in context. What was happening in Daniel 11, it was describing all the kingdoms that would arise. This kingdom against that kingdom, that kingdom against this kingdom. And all these mighty kingdoms that would arise throughout the history of mankind. And we see kingdoms arising continually throughout. We see right now Iran and China and Russia using people like Palestine and other people, but it's these mighty forces that are looking to take down America. We see these kingdoms, and then you see the kingdom of God. And then you get the scripture, Daniel 11.32. We don't need to be worried about all those things out there. Yes, we need to be in prayer, because it's really the enemy that's working through them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, as we're going to go into the next few weeks. So we know we're facing some things, but we don't need to be backing up, backing down, running and hiding. We need to stand strong. Daniel eleven thirty two. But the people, but the people, it might not be all of us, but the people, I want to be those people, but the people that do know their God that really do know their God, not just know about God, not just play church, not just warm a seat on Sunday morning, but they, they know their God. They know their God Sunday afternoon. They know their God Monday morning when they go to work. They know their God even in the midweek, Wednesday, and that hump day. They know their God. They know their God Friday night. Instead of going out to party, they know their God. They know their God. But the people that do know their God shall be strong. And what? And do exploits. Exploits really goes, will release the might of God. Will be a force to be reckoned with. Will tear down strongholds. Will go out and do the will of God and bring forth the kingdom of God and advance God's work throughout the world. They would do great exploits in the midst of Iran and Russia and, and China and North Korea and these countries with all their wicked schemes and plans by the enemy. These people who know their God will be strong and do great exploits. Do we have anybody here that knows their God? Anybody here that's going to be those that it says it's, this is written about you? This is written about today, not about tomorrow, not about yesterday. It's written about today, and it's written about us, that they take this personal. This is about me. I know my God, and I am strong, and I will do great exploits. 
That's our attitude as we awake each day. I know my God. I am strong and I will do great exploits. You can confess that out of your mouth every day. You can write this down if you can't remember it, but write it down. I double dog, triple dog dare you to see what will happen through your life, through our lives, if we write in our heart and confess it through our mouth each day. I know my God. I am strong and I will do great exploits. Watch what God will do here in South Jersey. Watch what God do as that spreads throughout our world. Let that be our confession each day. So as the worship team comes forth, that song that you just heard, I hope they have the lyrics. If not, try to get them. Be Strong by John Egan, they got it. This is going to be our theme song for this series. So we're going to be playing it, not just this week. <laughs> Because it's so good and so timely and so along with this series. So the charge is this. Let's embrace the call to be strong in the Lord as we face the challenges and opportunities before us. Knowing that it's God's strength that will lead us to even greater exploits in 2024. So I encourage you if you are able to stand, stand with your arms up in the air if you can. At least make sure your heart is bent to the Lord, whether you sit or stand, and let the Lord strengthen you today with all might. I'll let them worship the, to the song, and then I'll come back and pray. So next week you're going to rap this song, right? <laughs> <laughs> Soon on 
pumped up today yes. so father we just thank you lord god for strengthening us today in you we thank you lord that we are mighty in you we are your mighty army your saints the saints of god and we choose to leave this place marching forth advancing your kingdom oh god father we thank you for removing off of our life fear Removing out of our life, God, condemnation. Removing all these entanglements of this world, oh God. Freeing us up. We've waited on you, Lord, so now we are, we are mounted up. We're on those wings. We're with those eagles. We are soaring above the storms of this world. And we thank you, God, for empowering us today. And Lord God, we now go forth as your mighty army to do great exploits through you. And we give you all glory and praise in Jesus' name. If you need to receive the Lord into your life today, if you've never received the Lord, come forward. If you need prayer, you need strength, just come forward. We will be here to pray with you. God bless you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the service and you want to learn more about the ministry, head over to the website at praisetabernacle.church where you can learn about all the ministries Praise has to offer. Find devotional content, weekly newsletters from the pastors, and much more. We hope to see you soon right here at Praise Tabernacle because we are people restored and inspired serving everywhere.